Well, thank you very much. Uh, I think it was a very interesting day. It was a fascinating day. And it shows what a scam this whole thing is. And I think that seems to be the way almost everybody, even CNN and MSDNC, they have quotes over here that are drop the trial. Uh, Ellie Honig, uh, this is a statement you just made, would not have even charged this case. This case shouldn't have been charged, meaning it should have never been started against me. Uh, Nicholas Chambers, lawyer, Newsmax, there's no law against securing a non-disclosure agreement. There's none. Everybody has them. Every company has them. Out of concern for your marriage or protecting your family or any other reason, the common non-disclosure, NDAs. The Manhattan show trial against President Trump is a gross abuse of power. It's a disgusting spectacle, he says. And it can terrify all of us, and that's true. Jonathan Turley, Fox News, judge has failed to protect rights of defendant in requiring clarity. Trump did not violate federal election law at all. I didn't, I didn't violate any law. It was a scam. Bragg cannot prosecute federal election law. It's not under his jurisdiction. DOJ declined to bring the action. As you know, DOJ looked at this a long time ago. This case it was going to be brought, which it should have never been brought, should have been brought seven or eight years ago. They didn't do that because they wanted to bring it right in the middle of the election, and especially since we're leading in every poll. It's a weird situation where judges allow prosecutors to refer to election violations. And as you know, the uh, federal elections looked at it, and they didn't bring anything, and it's under their jurisdiction. That was from Jonathan Turley, Andrew McCarthy. NDAs are legal and common. Yet Bragg alleges Trump's was illegal. I have the only illegal NDA. It seems that Trump's crime by blue state lights was winning the election. That was my crime. I won an election that I wasn't supposed to win against Hillary Clinton. And that's not a crime. Either Republican in New York, it's not a crime. Bragg wants to prosecute Trump for federal campaign finance crime, something he has no jurisdiction to do. This is from Andrew McCarthy, highly respected. He's got no jurisdiction to do and that the feds, who do have jurisdiction, decided not to do it, not to charge. They decided not to do it. They looked at this and decided not to do it. This was Bragg, who, by the way, didn't want to do it himself. And then when I started Running, when I announced that I was running, all of a sudden it became a hot item again. This is a political persecution. Human Events Editorial Board, this case is a joke. Ashton Kutcher is going to pop and left to tell us that we've been pumped. I think I know what that means. The series of glorified legal pranks has seriously called into question the impartiality of the American justice system. Justice is blind, yet, unlike this case, justice is not dumb. Would appreciate it if they do the right thing. We would very much appreciate it if they do the right thing. Sean Hannity, Fox News. How did they come to this legal theory? Shows there is a problem with our legal system. We're supposed to believe in equal justice under the law, and this is not happening in America. Michael Goodwin of the New York Post, highly respected media obsession about the partisan show trial of defendant Donald Trump, is obscuring a far more significant truth about him. Candidate Trump has opened up his biggest lead in the presidential campaign. Polls of battleground states, along with such evidence and such other evidence as the enormous turnout of over 100,000 people in New Jersey, rally this weekend, this last weekend, and dispirited concessions by Joe Biden supporters signal that we've reached a turning point in the battle for the White House. It's all a big disgrace. It's all, it's all political. Jason Cohen, the Daily Caller, respected voters told MSNBC the cases have increased their support for Trump. 
They went out to the voters and they said, we like Trump a lot better now because they see what's happening with this horrible witch hunt. It said, I've talked to many people who formerly identified as a Democrat. A certain voter, I won't use the name, but said they have changed their political persuasion to independent and are now looking forward to voting, very forward to voting for Donald Trump. These are people that were Democrats and they're looking to vote for Donald Trump. Trump support with the black men has surged in all seven battleground states by large, large numbers. CNN chief national affairs correspondent Jeff Zeleny said Monday that swing state voters tell him they're disgusted and tired of what's going on here with the Trump trial. Charles Compton, New York Post, had this case gone to an elected New York State Supreme Court judge, elected is the word, chances are he or she would have dismissed such a baseless political persecution or prosecution against Trump. However, acting Supreme Court justices like Juan Mershon are political appointees subject to political manipulation. That's true. While Trump is charged with fraud, it's Bragg and his political handlers who are the ones that are committing it. Andrew and Katie Cherkasky, these are high-level lawyers, very, very prominent. New York case against Donald Trump is drawing to a close, but one critical aspect seems to be missing. Where's the crime? These are two very powerful, very good lawyers, highly respected. Mike Davis, highly respected. This is blatant lawfare and election interference by the radical Democrats, including President Biden himself. Oh, Biden is charged at the ones with them, the ones circling that beautiful resolute desk in the Oval Office. Democrats do not have a case against President Trump. This is a witch hunt. This is a prosecution without a case. This is all political. This is done to damage a political opponent like a third world country would do. Jeremy Hunt, Fox News. This is about one man, Alvin Bragg, who puts his political ambition over the rule of law and the judicial system. And New York has, has got to do something about what's happening because you look at Judge Ed Gorin, you look at Judge Kaplan, what they've done, it's disgraceful. Everyone's laughing at the New York system and companies are leaving, people are leaving, but major companies with tremendous taxpayer dollars and employ employers of millions of people, literally, people are leaving, they're taking their companies and they're all watching this case and they're watching in Gorin too and they're watching Kaplan. Tom Fitton, the Biden Democratic Party sham and the sham trial and other abuses of Trump are an international scandal that harms America and it really does, it really harms America. It's from Tom Fitch. Our country's reputation is a shining city on the hill. It's tarnished now by political persecution of Trump. Now the whole world sees our system is no better than theirs. We're a banana republic. It's very sad. Then we have story after story about how this trial is one that should have, as they say, never been charged. It should have never been brought. And again, if it was going to be brought, it should have been brought years ago. You know, they're trying to rush to get it done before the election so that they can harm me, so they can hurt their political opponent. They're rushing. All this rush, there's no rush. These trials take forever. But this one, they're rushing it. We're here at early in the morning and we leave. In the evening, now the judge wants to extend the time periods so that we can get this thing done fast before the election. It's terrible. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. That includes the other cases, too, including the civil cases. And they all come out indirectly and directly. They come out of the White House and the DOJ. I want to say just one thing. I've seen some very bad news come out on inflation, on the economy, on the EV mandate, electric vehicle mandate, how crazy it is, it's going to destroy our country, it's so crazy. But I saw something today that's made me worse than anything. President Xi of China, I know him well, and President Putin of Russia, I know him well. 
They're right now together working on plans where they combine, where they get together and do damage, because that's ultimately what they're thinking about, doing damage. And you take a look at what President Xi said today, he fully expects to take Taiwan. He made that statement today. That's a big statement. And I'm sitting here in an ice box. I'm sitting here listening to a case that even people from CNN and MSDNC say should never have been brought. I've been sitting here for almost four weeks, and we still have a long way to go. And I just want to thank all the lawyers involved because they've been really working hard. And I'm spending a lot of time, and I'm spending a lot of money, which is what they want. They want me to spend my time and my money. And I'm willing to do it because ultimately we have to fight for the Constitution. Thank you very much. It was just announced last month, inflation surged once again and surged very badly. Joe Biden's inflation tax continues to take away 30 to 50 percent of every dollar you have. It's a 50 percent tax. That's what it is. Joe Biden, without any tax hikes, which he's going to give the biggest ever, has already tax hiked you 50 percent. It's like a sales tax, but much bigger, more painful and more destructive because all of the money goes to pay for Joe Biden's wasteful inflation spending like the Green News scam. And that's what it is. It's a scam. Not one thing is cheaper under Crooked Joe's food, gasoline, cars, trucks, rent, and mortgages. They're all through the roof. The whole country's going to hell because of this guy. He's got a 50 percent tax, and nobody ever talks about it, and nobody wants to hear about it. But that's what it is. It's called an inflation tax. Biden's price hikes are killing the American dream. Perhaps most tragically of all, the 50 percent Biden inflation tax hits working Americans and young Americans the hardest. It also hits African Americans and Hispanic Americans like as hard as they've ever been hit. It's a massive wealth confiscation from the people who need it most and from people also that produce our jobs. Crooked Joe and his cronies are getting rich while you're struggling to get by. If you're a young person, Joe Biden has completely pulled the rug out from under you. There is no longer an American dream. He's made it impossible for you to save to buy a house or to have a wedding while simultaneously driving up the price of everything for which you want to save. The month I left office, the 30-year mortgage rate was 2.65 percent. Now it's almost 8 percent. Joe Biden is the worst president for young people in American history. The Biden inflation tax is also crushing corner stores, restaurants, and small businesses of all kinds, including those owned by millions and millions of African Americans and Hispanic Americans. They're the ones that are taking this the hardest. They're the ones that have just told Joe Biden, we don't want you anymore. Look at the poll numbers. The Hispanic Americans, African Americans don't want Joe Biden anymore. He's destroying their dream. One thing is very clear. Whether you're young or old, black or white, you can't afford four more years of crooked Joe Biden, the worst ever. I will end this nightmare, and we will once again have the greatest economy in history, the history of the world. Thank you.